Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Now, it goes without saying, it is, of course, a pivotal year for U.S. politics as President Biden and former President Trump face off in a 2020 presidential election rematch in November, of course, of this year. Plenty of voters to think about, of course, when November comes around with economic issues, including the cost of living at the forefront for many. Very pleased to say right now to talk about all these issues and a trade mission to Europe. Glenn Youngkin, the governor of Virginia, visiting Europe on this trade mission. It's the third international trade mission then, governor, for you in your role. Germany, Denmark, Finland, Switzerland. How do you define success on a mission like this? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And we have had a tremendous trip uh, to Europe. We've seen great companies. We've seen political leaders. And success for us is, is defined first by deepening relationships. We have a number of great companies that have been in Virginia for 30, 40, 50 years that are headquartered in Europe, but have their US headquarters or manufacturing in Virginia, but also new relationships. And it's also been a great time for us to meet new companies that are interested in coming to Virginia. And we've had a couple really interesting, great announcements, uh, $400 million investment in Virginia uh, yesterday out of, out, out of uh, Denmark with 150 new jobs. Uh, but on top of that, we've also been able to glean real insight into macro trends. And of course, I've heard, Tom, over and over again about the, the, the tremendous risk of China and the need to be invested in the U.S., uh, the need to make sure that power is reliable and affordable and increasingly clean. And of course, mm. talent is at the forefront of all discussions and Virginians are the home to the best talent in the nation and that's why people want to be there. Really, really interesting. Of course, you have the economic outperformance of the U.S. as well, the Inflation Reduction Act. I wonder, in, ter in terms of the reliability question, Governor, is the U.S. still reliable? Will it still be reliable after November if you get a President Trump I in office? There's deep concern. We know this in European capitals about where President Trump stands on things like NATO, on Ukraine, on trade, indeed. Has that been a topic that's come up? Is that concern justified? Well, I think... Uh People look back at the rip-roaring economy that was built during the last Trump administration and would fully expect that uh, President Trump, uh, should he be elected, would build a rip-roaring economy again. And, and of course, the challenges that we have in the U.S. economy today are underpinned by high inflation and low growth. Uh, and I see it every day. Uh, Virginians are struggling. They're living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, the grocery store prices have gone up 25 percent over the last few years. Gas prices are up 50 percent. Uh, the silent thief of inflation is really causing challenges. And so we need the opposite. We need, we need low inflation and high growth. I believe that's what President Trump built uh, his last time. Uh, it's an economy that people remember very well. And that's the mm -hmm. economy that we need, we need to make sure that international companies are investing into. And Tom, I think at, at the heart of this is the recognition um, that the threat of China uh, around the world is driving driving uh, particularly European businesses to understand that trusted relationships, supply chains in these most critical industries like semiconductors, like pharmaceuticals, um, like electric vehicle batteries and the need for advanced storage are driving people to want to invest in the United States, grow businesses in the United States and deepen mm -hmm. the already great relationships that we have. And, and so, therefore, presumably, you would lobby against tariffs on European businesses, on the European economy, if that's what comes through from a President Trump. Yeah, I, of course, the, the, the issue of tariffs uh, is something that uh, was, was used effectively back in the, the Trump administration in, in establishing a real recognition that China was competing unfairly. Uh, China continues mm -hmm. to compete unfairly, and, uh, and it needs to be combated. And that's why the deep relationship with trusted, trusted allies is so important. Listen, the bottom line is we need to make sure that open access to markets goes both directions. Uh, and one of the things I've enjoyed the most is the recognition from so many European businesses that investing in the United States and developing a strong mm -hmm. platform for research and development, for mm -hmm. manufacturing, for distribution, for aftermarket support yeah. is so important. You know, one of the things we've seen in Virginia, which has been so exciting, is um, companies like Steel from Germany have been in, in Virginia for 50 years. Uh, their, US mm. their U.S. manufacturing hub is there, their Don't headquarters not. is there, their service centers are there. And that's what I think mm. that's what companies are recognizing uh, the U.S. offers, and particularly Virginia. Okay. 
Governor, on, on, the, on the politics of the US, and we're seeing this, of course, across campuses, at universities across the US, not just in your home state, but it's happened as well. We saw, we saw some violence at, at Virginia Commonwealth University in, in Richmond, not far from your, your governor's mansion. What actions would you be prepared to take if that kind of violence flares up again? Well, at the heart of this, first of all, um, is a real commitment uh, to freedom of expression. It's, it's in our First Amendment, uh, in our Bill of Rights to our Constitution, but it needs to be peaceful. And these demonstrations have crossed over peaceful in a big way. Uh, and what we've, of course, seen is non-students uh, causing real problems, uh, non-students uh, inciting uh, hate speech and anti-Semitism and violence. And so we preemptively went to work with our Attorney General, Jason Miars in Virginia, law enforcement, mm -hmm. leaders of our universities and colleges to make sure that we pr tried to preempt this. Uh, we would not allow encampments mm -hmm. and tents. Uh, we are not allowing hate speech. Uh, and if they're peaceful, then of course that's part of our constitutional right and part of the American fabric. Uh, but we can't allow hate speech, anti-Semitism, and most importantly, violence and disruption and threats. I think we've been mm -hmm. uh, effective in coordinating this, and, uh, and I'm hopeful that we can continue to make sure that the safety on our university campus yeah. is paramount. Former President Trump describing the white supremacist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, of 2017, that we all remember so starkly as peanuts compared to these university protests. Is that the right way to characterize it? Well, I think one of the big uh, priorities that we've had is to preempt and to make sure that violence doesn't even get started. And, and that's why this coordination early on with our attorney general, with law enforcement and with university leadership has been so important. And you know what we saw, of course, uh, at Virginia Commonwealth was a, a large uh, introduction of outside element. They were bringing supplies. They actually brought uh, water bottles that had been filled with bear spray. Uh, they were organized to try to, con try to confront law enforcement. Uh, and I don't believe that's the students. I think that's outside influences. And that's why it's so important that we're coordinated in a preemptive way to make sure that everyone stays safe. Are you worried more generally about political violence and civil unrest in and around the November general election in the U.S.? Well, again, I firmly believe that the ability to freely express one's views uh, is so important. It's part, of, it's part of America. It's part of our constitutional mm -hmm. freedoms and rights, and, and we must protect those. Um, but there are, there are real boundaries, and, and when threats are made and violence ensues, then, then we can't allow that to happen. Uh, and we've seen that when it goes, un when it goes uh, unaddressed, we can have situations like we saw uh, up at Columbia or we saw out in California uh, this week where uh, violence ensues. And we just can't allow that to happen. Mm. Most importantly, okay. there is an absolute safe place of freedom of expression that we need to ensure, but we must draw boundaries on what we're not going to allow. And intimidation, hate speech, and violence won't be allowed in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Another lightning rod issue for voters, it seems, is abortion, reproductive rights in, in the US. And it seems like at the ballot, voters are sending a pretty clear message that they want to keep reproductive rights. And you saw that in your own state, Virginia, last year. Are voters telling you that Republicans are on the wrong side of this issue? Well, f first of all, this is an incredibly emotional and diff difficult topic uh, across the United States. And uh, with, with the, the Supreme Court ruling now two years ago almost, um, states have taken up, uh, I think, the appropriate responsibility. Um, what we tried to do in Virginia was, was find common ground, to find a place that was reasonable. Uh, and I think that discussion is really important for us to have. Uh, and, I, and I'm uh, committed to continue that discussion uh, because I do think that it all starts with hearing one another and making sure that we first understand that, yes, this is an incredibly difficult topic. And second of all, there is a reasonable place to land. Uh, and that's the, that's the place that I can continue to work with our General Assembly in Virginia to try to find. Governor Glenn Youngkin, Governor of Virginia, really appreciate your time this morning as you wrap up that trade mission, of course, to Europe. And we look forward to welcoming you here in the UK at some point later this year. Sir, thank you.